This is Fred Beck and Fred to Exciting, proudly sponsored by Empire Fire Stores. Today I'm very lucky to join by over Zoom, Brian Villoria. Brian, it's nice to finally meet you, mate. How have you been? Uh, nice to meet you, Fred. Thank you for having me on your show, man. So right now you're in Hollywood and Brickhouse Boxing. How's it going over there? Very good. I just got in. Um, I'm in the office right now. Um, decided to do this. One of my sessions got canceled. So I was like, hey, let me see if I can squeeze him in. It's been very tight on my schedule lately. So I'm trying to get every little bit of a... Uh, um, um, you know, time in uh, for people when they need it. And so I'm here. So we're here. <laughs> but Brian, being busy is good though. But being busy is the best. It's busy. Yeah. Yeah. It's better than um, being at home, just watching Netflix all day. <laughs> <laughs> what are you watching on Netflix? Um, I just got done watching this show, this uh, TV show called uh, Skin, like, uh, what was it called? Skin. Skin. Um, uh, something about this ranch with like crazy stuff that's happening on it. Um, uh, yeah, they had like UFOs and cow mutilations and I watched the first episode. I got pretty much sucked into it and kind of binged it a little bit. Oh yeah, I've got a hit. Skinwalker, so... Skinwalker, yeah. The, Skinwalker. Uh, Skinwalker Ranch, yeah. Skinwalker Ranch, oh yeah, sounds pretty good. Do you watch a lot of Netflix or do you try not to but you end up watching it? You know, when I'm not doing anything, I usually am at home watching boxing fights, though, always breaking things down with uh, my, my, my fighters' opponents. And as when I'm not here in the boxing gym, I'm at home watching fights on TV. And, and uh, you know, every so often, I try to break the monotony of watching fights all the time with, with, with Netflix movies and, and TV shows. They've got a new Creed film coming out. They, they're filming it in February. Uh, probably filming is really wrapped up now. So the probably next year, the Creed film, Creed number three, will be out. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, I seen the. I love all those uh, movies, even spinoffs from like the Rocky, the Rocky movies, and and yeah, man, it's it's um, you know the the way they pre- uh, represent the the world of boxing on screen is, is crazy. I love yeah. it. It's good promotion for boxing as well. It gives it gives it a lot of good exposure. But I'll start off by asking about obviously a fighter you're probably quite well known for training is Alex Wasabi. How do you begin training, Alex? We met before uh, the Deji fight. He, uh, he was training with um, Ramon um, Espada at that time. And, um, you know, after the fight, um, a few months passed by. And they called me. I think uh, his management called me. And he was like, hey, uh, I, th- I don't think Ramon is going to be training Alex for this fight. Will you, will you be free and willing to, to train Alex for his next fight? And at that time, I didn't know he was going to be fighting KSI until Alex came into the gym. Like, hey, you know, my next fight is going to be against KSI. I'm like, okay. <laughs> let's go so you know i had a lot you know i got a lot of fighters in my stable as well so i'm trying to make sure i got everybody covered and i had to look the schedule to see if alex could fit in and i was like you know this is a big task and and you know having somebody like alex and his caliber to come in um i thought it was a big challenge um i saw the fight against him and deji um you know i know how big of a name ksi is and so I thought that was going to be a big challenge for me. And I was willing to take up the challenge. And, and the way he already, uh, you know, showed his demeanor in the, in, in the, in the gym, uh, the way he wanted it, the way he trained and how he is as a person, um, I just thought, you know, I, want to, I want to help him. And so mm-hmm. that's how I started training Alex. Did you know who Alex was? He's quite well known. Do you know who he was before he started training with you? A little bit, yeah. I'm not really, uh, I don't really walk, get myself into the YouTube um, scene. Um, uh, but I knew who he was, uh, you know, by some of the videos. I wasn't really, you know, deep into the the YouTube world. So, you know, but after I got introduced to him, I did, you know, na- naturally, I did look up uh, what he did and did a little bit of background research on him as well and saw that he was doing, you know, um, skits and funny videos and, and so like okay you know he's he's not from my world <laughs> you know I was I was I was raised in a world of, of always constantly fighting and training and and getting beaten up and you know for him to transition over to my world I'm like okay this is how I'm used to thing to things you know how I was raised in this world and so I want to show you a little bit of you know what you need to be doing um in order for you to prepare yourself for, for fights and get yourself ready for this kind of thing. So, mm, so I think they, are, they are two completely different worlds. It's always quite interesting when they see them, when you see them mix. But what do you make of this part against Deji? I take it you've watched it back now as well. 
probably quite a few times. Um, he did. He did a lot of things that you know he needed to do in order for him to win the fight. Uh, he nullified a lot of Deji's attack. You know, I've I've heard comments and seen things that people are saying. You know, Deji didn't really throw shots, which he didn't. But he, you know, I have to look at the other side as well. You know, Alex wasn't allowing him to throw shots. You know, he held when he had to. He had to. He kept the end of his shots. Um, he he was rangy in that fight, and so there was a reason why Deji wasn't throwing shots, and nobody was giving Alex the credit for him nullifying his attack. And so, um, you know, in this case. It's going to be different, you know, with KSI, and everybody knows that. I think it's a consensus agreement of having KSI to be a little bit more of a dog, <laughs> and that's what I think I keep hearing that he's a dog. He has a dog in him, you know. But it takes much more than being a dog to win a fight, right? I have to have intelligence in there, knowing when to attack, knowing when to press, defense, everything it has to click together in order for you to to win a great fight. And so I'm trying to help Alex prepare for this type of. Uh, uh, a, a fight mm, certainly and how much boxing have you watched of KSI's a lot I saw his fight against um, uh, uh, yeah with Logan um, you know just breaking down things that he had to do I know he keeps saying that he's changed himself and he's gotten a little bit more better now that he's but a rust is the big thing three years out of the ring for KSI so it's yeah it's a long, it's a long time to be not under the lights, you know. For me, a, a year is a long time. Uh, three years is pretty long. Your timing is gonna be off. It's gonna have, you know, gonna have to take time. You know, everyone say you can remedy that by sparring, but sparring and fights is two different. Things. They're completely different animals, and people have to understand that. When people are involved and people are screaming, and and you know the uh, the tension is a lot more more present you know things change you know and i've seen it many times that people can change their style and look very good um you know when fatigue factor comes in and, and the stress factor of, of 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 people being present and screaming you know thousands of thousands of screaming fans are, are screaming at you and and, and your and your adrenaline is is to the max level usually the case and i've seen it through my years is as a fighter, is you revert back to what you're, what you normally are. Mm. I mean, you could fake it for a couple of seconds, uh, you know, a couple of minutes, but eventually you revert back to, to what you were used to, you know. And hopefully, and sometimes you try to train to get yourself out of that thing and try to change your style. But, um, you know, you have to understand these kids hadn't been in the ring, or hadn't been fighting for long periods of time. Um, a lot of great fighters, uh, or most boxers that uh, you know I've been involved with has been started since they were kids, and are used to the type of stresses and and training that they're got you know they put themselves into. You know, Alex has only been training for what he said a couple of years, you know, and so and there's a lot of uh, nuances in the sport that he hadn't really picked up yet, um, you know, and so it's my job to help him navigate through that, you know, try to help him understand that there's little things within the, the structure of boxing that he needs to understand make sure that they are in place so that when you are in the ring um fighting in the real fight you're able to you're able to execute things a lot better under the stresses so that's my job it's my job to help him understand that and help him get ready for these type of big fights mm, certainly how much bigger obviously you've seen a few pictures of KSI I guess Alex will be going up like a few weight class as well what do you think the size difference between the two fighters will be for the way ends on fight night? Um, who, KSI or Alex? Well, both of them matched up together. You know, I I was the person that actually um, told Alex to put a, a rehydration clause on it. <laughs> you know, I looked at a contract and was like, listen, if KSI walks around 200 pounds at least plus, um, I don't know how much that is in kilos. I think that's like you know, um, 85 kilos, 95 kilos, stuff of that sort. Um, I feel like he can blow up to a weight where he's going to just be too big, you know. And I told him it'll be, it'll, it'll be smart to put a little bit of a rehydration clause on him and, and ask, you know, 10 pounds would be, would suffice. IBF does that. 
um, I won the IBF championship. It was my second world title that I won. And when I went to go and defend it, they told me I couldn't weigh more than 10, 15 pounds, you know, mm-hmm. on the day of the fight. So they had a rehydration clause within the IBF sanction. So I told them, I think it would be smart since you're the smaller guy, naturally, um, you're walking around at 172, 170 pounds. Um, you know, night of the fight, KSI could be up to 195 pounds, close to 200 pounds. So what is the rehydration clause? Is it by 10 pounds? I think it's 10 pounds, yes. It's okay. on my line. And uh, <laughs> I think that's why uh, Jake Paul used that against Hasim <laughs> Rockman. You know, I think you saw the clause. Like, yeah, that's, that's a smart thing to do. Um, yeah, some is it. Some is it. Keep it even. Um, so... For me, I don't think, and I told Alex, it doesn't matter if you're, you know, big. I just want him to be in shape, you know, go six rounds without having the gas out Um, because it's going to be taxing. And uh, I don't want you to put on unnecessary weight for you to lug around, you know, 10 pounds in a sport of boxing is a lot of weight. You know, people's like, it's just 10, 20 pounds. But to be honest, that, that can you know, that's mass, right? Mass is hard to move around if you're, if you're weighing, you know, 10, 20, 30 pounds heavier than, than your opponent. So mm-hmm. I just told him, just come in shape, you know, have a great cap, um, uh, do your runs, uh, spar well, and, you know, we'll see where the, uh, the dice falls. Yeah, certainly. That's quite, that's quite interesting what you're saying there about how it was like, oh, 10 pounds isn't that much, but actually, that's quite a lot. Was that 10 pounds around? I think that's around six kilograms. So it is quite a, quite a lot of weight. But how do you see the fight going there, Brian? What's your, obviously, you know, the prediction, Arsenal's prediction is quite kind of cliche, but how do you see the fight plan playing out between KSI and Alex Wasabi? You know, um, I can't really say because a lot of the game plan is going to be said, <laughs> um, you know, within my thoughts of how the fight's going to be. Uh, I want to see a great fight, though. You know, I, I, I want to see, I think it's going to be a fighter, uh, a fight that's going to be a lot more closer than a lot of people think. Um, I can, I, I see it a lot in threads and forums and, and comment sections saying that Alex is going to get knocked out in the first or first round or two rounds. And I hear KSI saying that he's going to toy with him. Boxing is not a, it's not a sport where he could, you know, pretty much toy with people. Um, I don't think you could go there and, and, and overlook people because you never know what they have. You know, you don't know the type of training you went through or what they've been through. And I've been, I've been at the ends of, of that spectrum as well. When I said, oh, this guy's, he's not on my level, <laughs> I ended up losing the final split decision. And I'm like, well, what, what happened? You know, overlooking a fighter is the most dangerous thing a fighter could do, you know, overlooking your opponent. And and I feel like a lot of people is going to be shocked or, or you know, not expecting what Alex is going to bring the night of the fight. And we've been training and having him, um, you know, work out really hard at the gym. And we don't show him anything. We don't, we don't put it up on social media or a lot of people are like, hey, how's Alex doing? They're asking me, you know, has he been training? Has he been doing the things? No, no bro, this kid works. Alex is one of the hardest working fighter i have in my stable right now he runs he does everything that's that's asked of him he never questions when we say well when i say go one more round he was like okay let's go one more round and i see in his face he's gassed out he's tired i'm like i'm just trying to test his mental fortitude to see if he could have that in the you know in the fight and try to work on his on his on his mental game as well and so people are gonna, uh, gonna see you know a great fight coming up on August 27th. And I hope that, um, you know, I hope that people are, don't overlook him too much, <laughs> you know, because I, I feel like for me, and I'm not saying it because, because I train Alex, um, but I feel like it has all the recipes for, for, a, for an upset. You know, I know we're coming in as, a, as the underdogs in this fight. Um, Alex is a smaller guy. He's, he's not the most... Uh, he's not as experienced, but he's very, very intelligent. He knows his boxing. He's athletic. And, uh, you know, I think a lot of it um, can work in this fight. Mm. Do, you believe KSR, do you believe KSR is dangerous, sir? Of course. Yes. Yes. Um, every fighter is dangerous. They have, there's, it's not always the same danger. 
yeah, that's say, cool. you know, um, a fighter can be dangerous because he's, he knows how to adjust or he knows how to, to approach a fight a certain way. Um, it is not necessarily always who hits the hardest, you know, or who's the strongest or who's the biggest, you know, it's not always like that. It's, it's, I've seen fights where the guy's bigger and stronger and still lose the fight because one, he couldn't hit the target that he was supposed to knock out. You know, that's one thing. Like, how can you be strong and heavy handed and, and knock out someone who can't even touch him? You know, guys like that goes up against Floyd Mayweather, you know, or guys that went against like the Pacquiao's or, you know, it's, it's, it's not just who has the strongest who can hit hard. Mm. You can't knock anybody out who's not in front of you. It's not to say that, you know, um, um, uh, you, you know, it's not to say that you're trying to just set up one shot, right? And, 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 and hope, <laughs> hope that you're going to land a big shot. That's, that's a bad, for me, I feel like that's a bad, um, bad strategy to approach a fight is to know you have a big shot and rely on that too much, you know, um, you gotta know how to set shots up, be able to, you know, go in and out and uh, position yourself correctly. If you don't have those, then how can you land a big shot? Exactly. Certainly. That's very, that's very true. But I noticed the interview you mentioned there about five minutes ago, we're going for a while, but you know, about five minutes ago, you mentioned that kind of having confidence and you were saying that you had one kind of fight to find a split decision loss. I'm guessing that was to Estrada, right? Um, it was against a fighter named, um, uh, it was way before Estrada. Already, um, it was. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, Omar Nino. Mm. Omar Nino was a, a fighter that I fought three times. And... First one, we had a, a, a draw or no, he won that. I forgot, but whatever it was, I felt like, you know, it was a fight that I was overlooking, right? Um, I was supposed to fight another big fight, this Japanese fight. And uh, this Japanese fighter, uh, I forgot what his name was at that time, but uh, he was supposedly a, a step up fight, um, like a, a, a fight where I was supposed to win. <laughs> But like I said, you know, when you overlook people, sometimes your plan is, is you know, <laughs> demolished in a way where you don't expect it to. Mm. So yeah. There's one more thing I do want to ask you about. Who do you think gave you your toughest test, Estrada or Gonzalez? Open the I got to say a Gonzalez. Oh, really? I Gonzalez, I Gonzalez is, is a legend, I believe, in my eyes. And to have lost for him, I no regrets. I was also at the tail end of my career. Um, not to take anything away from us, uh, from Gonzalez, but um, you know, I feel like I lost a step or two um, at that that point in my career. Uh, but I did train the hardest I can. I, I think I trained one of the hardest camps I had in my life for that fight. Um, but Gonzalez is just you know relentless. The amount of shots he throws from angles and the way he he uh, uh, moved around the ring. Um, his ring generalship was amazing. Um, it was just, it was a tough night, you know, tough night and, and hats off to him. He, I think he's has to go down one of the greatest fighters in uh, lower weight class fighters in the, in, in the history of boxing. Yeah, certainly. And hopefully they'll be fine again soon. But Brian, that's amazing. Thanks for so much time. I got good, definitely good 20 to 30 minutes. Here, so I do, I do really appreciate it. But if you want to contact you to get coaching one-to-one -one sessions, how may they do so? Um, you can hit me up on IG uh, at Deloria Boxing. Uh, my Twitter is at Brian Deloria. So if you can contact me through there, you could you can set up sessions and come out here at Brick House or, um, you know, and get some get some work done. Awesome. That sounds pretty good, Brian. I'll put all your links to those in the description, but I'm sure I'll catch up in a few weeks. Awesome. Breaks. But Brian, thanks so much for your time, mate. Thank you.